All right, question for you guys. Have you ever taken the time to kind of step outside of your pre-PT bubble or outside of your subjective bias about your application or step outside of your kind of echo chamber of your pre-PT friends talking about your application stuff? If so, that's great. I, I love it. You're way ahead of the curve. But if not, then you might want to listen into this video. If you're like, what, what are you talking about? I, I don't get it. Then this video is for you, specifically for you. So let's talk about it. What's up guys, my name is Casey Coleman. I'm a physical therapist and the co-founder of Pre-PT Grind. And on this video, we're gonna be talking about something a, a little bit different. Uh, uh, a video about your perspective, a video that can really help change your trajectory on how you apply to physical therapy school if you really pay attention and kind of go along and think about with what, what I bring to the table with this video. So oftentimes, pre-BTs are very insular in their own thought process or very inside their own bubble when they think about all the pre-BT stuff they're doing. And, and rightfully so, I, I was there because this is your career, this is your life, this is your um, money that you're gonna make in the future, all that stuff. So you should be thinking about yourself, so that's fine. However, oftentimes it gets to a point where pre-BTs um, aren't necessarily not delusional because you guys are, are very aware of, especially when it comes to grades and GPAs and uh, GRE and stats and saying, I'm not good enough. You guys are, you guys know how to do that and be, you guys know how to tear yourself down. But sometimes it gets to the point where you're not really objectively looking at your situation, how the other side is looking at your situation, meaning your application. Because, because here's the thing you know inside your own head because you're there all day all night how hard you work uh how much you could do how much you say or think you're going to do if some outcome goes the way you do like like this so when, when i was rejected from pt school the first time and if you want to hear my rejection story click the card above or go search it you guys know how to work youtube um i was like man if you just accept me i could do it Man, you guys won't know how hard I would work. I won't let you down. I, I got this. Just please, please let me in. So I know. Trust me. I know how that is. I know how you're feeling. But from the other side, from the DPT school side, they don't know who you are. They, they don't know whether to take your word for it or to just disregard it. They don't have any facts to go off of or the facts they do have to go off of are not saying what you're saying and it's not matching up. You're saying, oh, I will work so hard, I can do it. But your GPA and GRE is saying, no, she won't, she won't work so hard or no, he, he cannot do it. So they're looking at this from a completely subjective standpoint, whereas us as pre-PTs, we're looking at it from a subjective standpoint. So I, I say that first to, to say this and give you this to think about. If you can, if you can think about your rejection case or your bear case, me, meaning this, like um, unless you're from Chicago, bull and bear, you know, mean different things to you uh, for the sports teams. But uh, if you know anything about the finance world, uh, a bear case means like it's going down, like it's a bad case. Like for a company, if, if somebody has a bear case about a company, they don't think that company is going to do well. But if they have a bull case, that means they have a, you know, a good trajectory that the company will, you know, make more money and sell more products and all that stuff. So coming back to what we were talking about, your rejection case, your your bare case about your application, like the DPT schools usually think about and and look at your application from and your advisors say, oh, you can't do it because they're looking at the facts. That's usually where the bear case is coming from. So if you can look at that bear case, that rejection case, and understand that as well, or even better than the other people who are telling you about that, you are in a place of power. If you can argue their rejection case for you better than they can, or if you can argue it better than they can, you are in a very powerful position. Because once you understand your rejection case so well, you can go to your accepted case, that bull case, the reasons why you should be accepted 
from a much more powerful standpoint. Because if you understand so well the reasons why you should not be accepted, not just from, oh, I can do it. That's, that's not what I mean. But if you understand the reasons why they don't want you or the reasons why they would reject you so well, you can then go to the opposite side and play from a position of power. Oh, you're playing chess now. You're saying, oh, I know why you wouldn't want that. So I can move this piece here. I know why they wouldn't want me because of this problem. I can move my chess piece here. I don't, I know why they understand this or that. I can move my chess piece here and checkmate. I know your moves better than you. I know what, what I would do. I know my facts. I know where I'm at better than you do. And then I can go from my side and play from a position of power and tell you why I should be accepted despite your rejection case, despite your bare case about why I should be rejected. I know all that. I understand that better than you. And I'll go into that in a second. I understand that better than you, but despite all that, let me tell you why I should be accepted. Let me show you why. Let me prove to you why I should be accepted despite my rejection case. So you might be like, wait, what? What? I don't, I don't get it. And, and that's okay. I'm going to explain uh, a little bit more with an example. So hopefully some people can get it, but this could be a discussion. We can comment below all that stuff. So I hope, I hope you're catching. I hope you're picking up what I'm putting down because this is powerful if you can understand it. So for an example, let's just say you're like, okay, school, I understand why you don't, why I'm not very attractive to you as a candidate. I understand that because my GPA is, is low or whatever, or my GRE isn't how you want it to be. I understand you want my GPA at a certain level, at a, th at a certain threshold, because your university gave you standards to accept applicants from. If you're if you're a or if you're X Y Z universe if you're X Y uh, X Y Z D P T program and you're under New York University or Florida State whatever they might be giving you different standards to accept students, or if you're a private school or even a public school whatever, you might be reading different studies and different research articles from the Journal of Physical Therapy Education about how predictive measures measure if a student would be successful in physical therapy school or not. And based on different studies, you might come up to the conclusion saying, we want this GPA so that the students we accept will be successful. Same thing with the GRE or whatever that is. I understand all that because I read those studies too, because I've heard of people dropping out too. And I understand why you would probably, why I'm not that attractive to you, because based on what you know, based on what you learned, based off your experiences with other students, based on your years of research, I'm not a good candidate. I meet, I don't meet certain objective standards or I meet certain thresholds to say, not good. However, I'm working on things to prove to you and show you objectively that I can and that I will be successful in X, Y, Z. I'm working on one, two, three, and four to make sure my A, B, C, and D are better by the time I apply so that you can go to your objective measures, to your bear case, to your rejection case and say, does she or he check off all these boxes? I'm going to prove to you. I'm going to show you. I'm not just going to say, oh, please accept me. I'm going to show you I can do it so that you can go to whatever measures you need to and I can knock those out the park so that I can prove to myself and you that I can get through PT school successfully and be a great physical therapist. If you can think about your application, your weaknesses like that, I don't know what to tell you. You're a much different pre-PT applicant than everybody else. Case closed, point made, see you next video, all that stuff. I, I can end there because I think that's not an easy concept to grab all the time. Uh, that's not something that's talked about a lot. Um, that's not something, um, that's not an easy pill to swallow for a lot of pre-PTs. But really, 
that shows that you understand them so well that you put them at ease, that you speak their language, that you know where they're coming from. And then they could say, oh, finally, somebody understands me. Finally, somebody is proving instead of just talking. Finally, somebody understands where and how and why we do things and where we're sitting and what we're looking at objectively when we see their application. Finally, somebody can do that. And they're not just in their bubble, in their chamber saying, I'm so good, I can do it, I can get accepted because I know I can even though I have straight Fs or straight Cs, right? You're coming from a total, a totally different position of power. Uh, there's a quote out there by Charlie Munger, I believe, I'm paraphrasing. I couldn't find the quote before I did this video, but it's something about if you can understand uh, the bear case um, and the bull case, you would be, uh, you're that much better of an investor. Something like that. This whole concept is really coming from that quote or that uh, talking point from Charlie Munger, uh, who's the business partner of Warren Buffett. So if you can do that, if you can take that concept and bring it to your pre-PT application, it's, it's different. And every, everything that you want and everything that you're saying about, I want to stand out, uh, and how do I stand out and how do I be different and, and how can I be different is in part coming from this video and coming from that point. However, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of introspection. Um, it's a lot of going through this video again and really trying to hash out how can I be better and was I being subjective or was I being objective and being real with yourself. It's not easy work. But a lot of people ask how to stand out and standing out is doing more. So if you want to stand out, you have to do more and doing more is doing something like this. So I know this was a little bit of a different video. I hope, I hope one person out there grabbed and grasped half of what I said. I hope I hope they did um, because this was really powerful. So hope you guys caught that. Like, subscribe, share, comment. You guys have been doing great with that. And yeah, follow us everywhere. You guys know how to work the internet. Get inside of our world and put in that work. We'll see you on the next video. Take care.